developing world's progress is seriously lagging on the global targets related to food and nutrition, with rates of child and maternal mortality still, still unacceptably high. This is according to a report released by the IMF and the World Bank. Uh, Eleni Jackals spoke to Joss Verbeck, the lead author of the Global Monitoring Report 2012, uh, titled Food Prices, Nutrition and the N uh, Millennium Development Goals, and asked how far we are in reaching these goals. Well, as you know, the Millennium Development Goals, there are about eight groups of, uh, of goals for the Millennium Goals. And at the moment, actually, already globally, two of these goals have been met. One is the, one is the, the goal on extreme poverty. That one has been reduced. The proportion of people living in poverty has been reduced by 50% in 2010. And at the same time, the MDD on improved water, access to water, has also been reached in 2010. Uh, other ones are decently on track, the one for primary completion rate, the ones on uh, gender equality in education, and also the one on improved sanitation is not too far behind. The ones that are really problematic, and not only for the Africa region but globally, are the ones related to child mortality and to maternal mortality. And that these will re need a real push for, from the, uh, all of us to be able to make it uh, by 2015. Uh, Yas, if we could just delve into uh, food prices and the fact that we've seen a lot of volatility coming through there. I mean, one solution is to really focus on agriculture on the African continent. There is headway being made. Some say it's not being made fast enough. And then you have the other issue of water scarcity. I mean, what kind of issues do you foresee happening there where you've got uh, a lot of government, governments that are willing, but we're just not seeing this happening fast enough? Well, we certainly need the uh, emphasis on agricultural policy because we need uh, to orchestrate the supply response to productivity enhancement, and particularly in sub-Saharan Africa, to be able to deal with higher and more volatile food prices. Uh, things that can be done and should be done is raising crop yields, in particular in, in Africa. Yields are for certain grains are only 10% of what is achievable. Uh, also, the improvements of weather-resistant varieties and the use of weather resistance varieties is very important and you're yeah. absolutely right yeah. issues related to water management need to be addressed as well irrigation is very important for uh, for agriculture productivity so if we just hone into the sub-saharan african region of course you were alluding to some of those numbers the region achieving more than 60 percent of the progress required to reach those 2015 goals uh, clearly 40 percent away it cannot be achieved in the next few years i mean do you think that we are going to just push out the millennium development goal targets i mean what kind of uh, and how important is it that we actually reach these targets i know that they have been put together uh, by world forces and bodies to ensure that we do uh, tackle some of the biggest challenges facing people uh, on a global level but the reality is we're just not close to achieving those things. Well, I, I don't want you to be so pessimistic about uh, <sighs> the progress in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. I think what we should not forget is that the starting position of Sub-Saharan Africa was very different than the starting position of other regions. So even though it might look that you have not achieved much, actually you have in certain areas made much more progress in absolute terms, like in reducing child mortality and reducing actually uh, infant mortality as well much more in absolute terms than in the other regions. Yes, you are lagging behind, and yes, it will be very difficult for Sub-Saharan Africa to, to reach the Millennium Development Goals by 2050. One that would be within reach is the, is the equality between girls and boys in schools. That's certainly one within, within reach within Sub-Saharan Africa. The other ones, yes, they will be, will be tough. We'll need a coordinated effort mm -hmm. among all the parties involved. Yes, I mean, looking at, looking at it from a policy perspective, and then this is the point where I'd like to really focus on what we see from regional bodies. We've got the ECOs, we've got SADC, uh, we've got, of course, uh, various bodies that are tackle, tackling the, the trade issue. Intra-Africa trade is still not happening at a large enough level because this could also start to mitigate a lot of the uh, food price volatility that we experience within the region. Uh, what is your sense on the prog progress in this regard? And do you think that there's any specific policy issues that we need to uh, look at so that we can start seeing mo more momentum with regards to trade, intra-Africa trade? Oh, you're absolutely right on that front. Uh, better trade integration within the region of Africa can help a lot for reducing price volatility and increasing access to, uh, to food markets globally. Uh, Africa is very much lagging behind uh, in that. 
And I think many of the policies uh, are known. The issue is implementation. So, Yas, when you say implementation, I mean, uh, it's something that we've been beating for quite some time. It's a drum that we've been, of course, beating for uh, a long time in Africa. And what do you think it's actually going to take? Do you think that um, the people that are in charge are just not doing enough? Uh, do you think that it's lack of skills? Do you think it's a combination of all those factors? And do you think that it's also lack of funding? Because that's also one of the biggest hindrances that we've seen. Well, dealing with non-trade barriers uh, along the roads of... of, of of trade routes has very little to do with uh, capacity, I think, and has very little to do with, uh, with financing. It might have to do with the, the, the salaries that the relative people who are setting up the roadblocks uh, have to deal with. But I think it's very much a political issue. I think if the, if the African political leaders really would want to open up their markets and really want to integrate with one another, then it can be done.